it's Paige and today I'm going to show you how to make a nifty color chart just like this one here. This is great if you sell products where your customers can choose a color or fabric option at checkout. And I don't know if you've ever tried to make one of these in the past, but you've probably had to bring all of your colors in, make sure that they're all aligned, and it probably took you a really long time. But I'm going to show you how to do this in a way that's going to just take a few minutes, and it's going to blow your mind. So there are a few things you need to do before you get started. One, you'll want all of your swatches in a folder. This is Bridge. So I'm opening up Bridge. Bridge is a file viewer. If you have Photoshop, Bridge came with Photoshop. So if you don't have it downloaded, you'll just want to go to your Creative Cloud subscription and download Bridge. Or if you have an older version of Photoshop, get out the CD and make sure that you install Bridge as well. So this is a file viewer and you're going to want to make sure all of your images are saved in the same location. This is no different than your file viewer or your, your finder window or your explorer. It's just, um, that's all bridges. It's just a file viewer. So I could look at the same folder in my finder, um, but I'm just using bridge because bridge talks to Photoshop. So if I go in here and I scroll down to my folder here where this is saved, you can see it's the same, it's just that I can't talk to Photoshop with the Finder window, so that's what I use Bridge for. Because this is going to talk to Photoshop, so this is how we're going to do it. We're going to use Bridge and we're going to use Photoshop. Now, if you don't have all of your files in the same folder, you'll just want to open up your swatches in Photoshop. You'll want to make sure that they're all cropped to the same ratio. So ratio refers to um, the, so a square is a one by one ratio. A four by six is a two by three ratio. An eight by 10 is a four by five ratio. So you'll want to make sure that all of your images are cropped to the same ratio. So for this tutorial, I'm cropping them all to a square. If you don't know how to do that, you just click your crop tool right here in Photoshop. Up here in the toolbar, there are options. You would just pull this down and you would click the one by one square option. And then that's going to make your crop tool a square. And then you just double click over it. You can move it around if you need to. And that's going to crop it to a square. And then you can just go to file, save as, and save it in the folder where you're saving all of your swatches. So you can see I'm saving all of my swatches in this sample swatch um, folder. So that's what you would need to do to get started with this. So once you have all of your images in the same folder, we can go ahead and run the Photoshop magic that we're going to run to create this copy, this contact sheet or color chart or swatch chart, whatever you want to call it. So you have all your images, they're all, they're all cropped to the same ratio and you have them all in in your folder, you're going to open up that folder and bridge. So you're just going to navigate to wherever that folder is stored on your computer. Um, over here you can see um, there is a folders tab and you can just navigate to wherever these are stored, just like you would do in your Explorer or your Finder. You just need to find where you saved all of your swatches. Now we want to make sure that the swatches are not only the same ratio, but they're also the same size. So for this tutorial, I'm making sure that all of my swatches are a thousand by a thousand pixels. There's a really easy way to make sure that all of your images are the same size because if you crop different size images, even if you crop them to a square ratio, they may, some might be 1200 by 1200 pixels, some might be 1000 by 1000 pixels. So I'm going to show you a really easy way to make sure that these are all the same size. So once you have that folder opened up in Bridge, you're going to select all of these swatches. So I'm going to select all the swatches. I'm just holding shift. I selected this first one. I'm holding shift down on my keyboard. That's going to select all of the swatches. Then I'm going to go up to the tools menu, down to Photoshop, and select image processor. This is going to open up a new window. I'm going to, um, I don't need to do anything on the first one. On the second one, I want it to save in the same location. Then I'm going to save it as a JPEG, and we're going to save it as a quality of 10. We're going to resize to fit, and I've changed this to 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. Convert profile to sRGB, and then you just click run. You don't need to worry about any of this other stuff. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to press run on this, 
And what this is going to do is it's going to very quickly resize all of those images and it's going to save them into a new folder. So now when I go back to that folder in Bridge, you can see that there's a new folder here and it says JPEG. So these are all now sized to 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. If I look at my metadata and I look at each of these, they're all 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. So now I'm going to select all of these again. And this is where the magic happens. So we're going to select them all again. We're going to go up to Tools, Photoshop, and we're going to go to Contact Sheet. And this is going to open up another new window. So under the source images, you're going to use Bridge. It's showing us that we have 16 files selected and we are going to create a new document. Now I'm going to create a document that's 800 by 800 pixels. I'm going to have it in RGB color, 8-bit depth, 300 resolution, and my color profile is sRGB. Because I have 16 images selected, I want to make sure that my columns are nice and even, so I'm doing 4 by 4. Now if you had 12 images, you might do 4 by 3. If you had 25 images, you might do 5 by 5. So you do have to do a little bit of math to make sure that these are all going to fit on there and look nice. Um, but I'm doing 4 by 4 because I have 16 images. Then down here, you want to select the font that you want to use and the size that you want the font to be. I'm going to create my, I'm going to make my font seven points. And this might, you might need to play around with this a little bit, um, but you're probably going to want it between six and eight points. This is really important right here where it says flatten all layers. You don't want to have this checked. So make sure that that's not checked. And then all you do is press OK. Now once I press OK, this is going to take a couple minutes to run. It runs a script and it kind of does its thing. So while this is running, I'm going to actually fast forward in the tutorial because it doesn't do anything that you really need to see and it would just be boring to watch that for two minutes. But while this is running at home, you can go get a cup of coffee or something and just let it run. So now after the script runs, you should have a file that looks something like this. And now we just need to do a couple of tweaks to make this look like my sample one right here. And I'm going to include these swatches in a folder for you so you can practice this using the exact same swatches that I used um, and all of that. So you can practice this a couple times before you use your own swatches. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to select these the font here. I want to move this down slightly. So I'm going to use my move tool and I'm just going to select that. I'm going to make sure that auto select is checked and now I'm going to select, I'm going to click over the font. I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard because this is going to let me select all of the fonts at the same time. So I'm just clicking over each of the, all of the writing here. And once I have them all selected, and you can see over my layers panel, it has them now highlighted. I'm just going to press down on my arrow key a couple times, and this is going to move that type away from the square here, and I think that just makes it look a little bit better. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to select my type tool, and that's just a big T, and I'm going to click over each label, and I'm going to remove the .jpg because that's um, it used the file name, and I don't want that um, .jpg. I just want the hex code. So I'm just going over each of these types, and I'm just and I'm just getting rid of the .jpg, and I'm just pressing backspace on my keyboard. All right, so now I have all of the .jpgs gone, and that looks a little cleaner, and so now I just have the hex code under each of these. Now I'm gonna make this look pretty, because you could stop here if you wanted, but we wanna add a label, and we wanna put you know, a little bit of instruction here. So we are going to go up, to, and we're gonna make the canvas size bigger on this image. So to do that, I'm going to select all of my over here in the layers panel. So I have my layers panel open. If your layers panel isn't open, just go to window layers and that'll open your layers panel. I'm over my layers panel and I want to select all of the layers except for my background layer right here. 
So to do that, I want to select the very first layer in the panel. I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard, and that's going to select all of my layers. Now I'm going to press Control G if you have a PC, or Command G on my, P on my Mac, and I'm going to create a group. I'm going to double click right over group one, and I'm just going to name this swatches. Now I'm going to click the background layer. I'm going to go up to image, canvas size, and I'm going to change this to pixels. And we're going to change the pixels to a thousand by a thousand pixels. On the canvas extension color, you want to make sure that the canvas extension color is white and then you're going to click OK. What this is going to do is it's going to extend the canvas and now I'm going to move I'm going to move these right here which I have all grouped together so this will be really easy to move. So I'm going to go in my layers panel I'm going to select that group that we just made of the swatches I'm going to use my move tool here and I'm going to uncheck auto select and now it's going to move this entire group down. So I'm just going to move it down until I like where it is. So I'm going to move it down right about there, and that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add some text to this. So I'm going to go over to my type tool, which is the T. I'm going to click here somewhere close to the middle. I'm just going to click there. You can select the color of type that you want. I'm going to keep it black, but you would just double click over this and it's going to bring up a window and you can select any color that you want. I'm going to make sure that my font is centered. I'm going to bring the font up a little bit because this is going to be a big label. Uh, let's bring it up to about eh, 36. And I'm going to change my font to this one just to give it a nice look and I'm going to call this color options. And then I can move this around. That's a little big, so it's really easy to resize. You can just go to your move tool. Now you would go to the corners of, you can see when you go to the corners, you get that little sideways arrow. You can just m change the size of this. Now you'll notice if I do this free form, it's going to like stretch out the text and make it look weird. To fix that, just hold down shift on your keyboard. And then that's going to keep the same aspect ratio of... Um, the font so it doesn't look stretched out or weird. Then I'm just going to pull it over to, and snap it to the middle of my chart here and double click on this layer and that's going to that's going to keep the changes. So now I have color options. I'm going to make it just a tiny bit smaller and snap it to the middle again. If you don't see these snaps, um, you can see how the little purple guidelines come out. If you don't see those, you can turn those on, just go to view and go and check snap and then go to um, snap to guides. All right, so I have that there. Now I'm gonna add just another bit of text and we're gonna do just a little bit of instruction and I'm gonna make that about like eight point font and I'm going to change the font again. You don't have to change the font. I'm just changing it to match my branding. So you can just, you can put whatever little bit of instruction that you want there. I just have please note color code and the notes at checkout. You want to make sure that that's centered too. And then you just double click to keep that. So now you can see we have color options and um, please note color code and the notes at checkout. So now you could stop here, but if you want to make it, um, I added a stroke around the squares and a little bit of a shadow just to give it a little bit of depth. You would select over in your layers panel, the swatches folder, and we're going to press this button that says FX and we're going to go to stroke. And I did a three point stroke. And then over here, you can see that there are more effects that you can add, and I'm going to add a drop shadow. And then you can just add your drop shadow until you like the way it looks. And you can just adjust those. So I'm just adjusting this. I have my distance at 1 and my size at 10. That just gives it a little bit of depth. We're going to go ahead and select OK. And now you can see that that just added a little bit of, that kind of looked flat, and this makes it look, it just pops a little bit more. 
So that's all you do there. And now this is just ready to go. All you have to do is you would just go to files, um, export, quick export as PNG, and then just save it wherever you want it. I already have it saved um, from before, but I can just change the file name and just save it again. And then once it saves, you're ready to go. You can post this on Etsy and you can do this again and again and again. And it's pretty simple and easy. So I will load these swatches so you can practice along at home. And I hope this was helpful. Thanks. Bye. Hi, it's Paige. Before you go, if you want more videos, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. If you want to find exclusive videos and content, join our Facebook group. Let's be friends.